Our Knicks, man. Me and Alex is Knicks. Uh, <laughs> had us going through the night, waiting, waiting for the trade. No trade. But they did come out with oh, Obi Toppin's brother, Jacob, and and uh, Jalen Martin, who came out of the G League Ignite. What's what's the uh, what's the intel on these guys, man? Uh, so Jalen Martin, he he actually was the overtime elite. Overtime elite. Uh, overtime elite. Yeah, yeah. Overtime elite, which is uh, worse than the G League Ignite. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but uh, he's a kid. He likes to get downhill. He's athletic. Um, I think he shot 27, 28 percent from three. So you know the the shot's not really there. He's okay. I I doubt. You know he's. Look, Westchester's nice this time of year. Yeah, is, yeah. is what I'll say to him. Yeah. Um, Jacob wow. Toppin's a, a little. Fired. <laughs> Jacob Toppin's a little bit more interesting to me. Uh, you know, I I think he's probably going to spend some time in the G League as well. But uh, like Obi, he's athletic. Um, he started shooting it a little bit better this year. Skinny has to put on more weight, definitely. But I think the NBA style is going to help him out uh, a little bit in a way that Kentucky didn't always um I, he was somebody coming into the year that i was like all right he could be a sleeper maybe now he was a little bit older so i didn't expect him to like shoot up draft boards or anything um because you know he didn't have like the self-creation ability necessarily that obi did when he was in college in mm. kentucky there's a little bit more you know there's more mouths to feed in kentucky than you know like there were at dayton for obi but uh i think that he's gonna you know definitely get a cup of coffee as an nba player uh for sure all right well i mean look at least, you know, they, they got him on the two-way contracts, both of them. I never saw NBA type of play in Trevor Keels. I don't think he should be brought back. You can have three two-ways now, so we'll we'll see so we'll see what happens there. But overall, you, you think these guys could get, you know, some back end of the rotation type of minutes. Maybe down yeah. maybe not now, but down the road. Yeah, topping. Topping for sure. I mean, Jalen Martin, the the thing with the the overtime elite league, and you know, I got to see him work out in front of NBA teams at the overtime elite pro day in Atlanta earlier this year. I uh, saw him at a tournament uh, in New Jersey against some of the best high school competition. That's what it was. They're playing high school competition. Mm. Uh, you know, like the the Thompson twins were twenty years old, so obviously there are some guys you know there that were pro level, but it, they're they're playing high school comp, and now you're jumping up to the best league in the world. So the transition from that league now to to the pros for somebody like him who can't shoot is is going to be tough. Now he's you know I like how he moves on the court. Um, I like how he attacks downhill. He could hit his free throws, mm-hmm. but it was just a hard league to take stuff out of because you know it's new. And again, there's that mix. Now I think it's going to get easier going forward because I don't think we're going to see these Thompson situations going forward because now that you can do the NIL deals. Um, it's going to be used much more like a, you know, a high school academy or a European basketball academy where these guys, they're all four and five stars. Like they're already committing to big time college programs. We just saw a kid go from OTE. Now he's going to be with the Ignite next year. That's how this is going to be used going forward. But this first two years, um, these guys who signed the contracts to be there for two years before NIL, they got caught, you know, in a weird situation. And I think it's going to be a big time adjustment for him playing against, you know, these, these pro level guys. Late on the newswire, man, Corey. We always, whenever you come on, we always talk Zach Levine, <laughs> Zach Levine, Zach Levine, Zach Levine. Well, according to Stefan Bondi of the New York Daily News, Zach Levine's representatives are against a trade to the Knicks. Zach Levine, represented by Clutch Sports, Rich Paul. Rich Paul studied under the the, the, the tutelage of one Leon Rose and CAA. Once upon a time, they were one big happy family. You see the the pictures with LeBron holding the trophy. It's World Wide West. It's Rich Paul. It's Mav Carter. It's Leon. The, the whole family under the CAA umbrella. PP. Yeah. Yeah. I was, it's <laughs> somewhere, somewhere in there. And then, you know, Rich Paul splits off, splintered factions. And now you got two crime families running the NBA, man. I mean, what do you guys think about this? Like, is, is Rich Paul and Clutch really going to do what's best for their client, or are they out to just do what's best for them? Because because it's so interesting, man. You look at the Knicks, down the roster, it's CAA to the, to, to the T. You look at the Lakers, it's clutch down the road. I mean, this looks like an extension of college basketball with, with the shoe contracts. Biggie oh, and Pac. Biggie and Pac, you know? <laughs> what, what, Corey, what do you think, man? I, I mean, you know how political the behind the scenes of... of nba basketball is man um ultimately i I mean look new york city 
is not the place that you're going to be like, absolutely, no way, I ain't going there. Zach Levine has a good relationship with Tibbs. He always speaks highly of him. I think if it came down to it, and that was the Bulls were like, hey, we are trading you, and these are your options, and New York's on the list, and then it's also, you know, let's say like Detroit and, uh, you know, Indiana, he'd probably start reconsidering how uh, appealing New York looked in that a scenario right. like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's just they're always linked somehow in, in the news. It's been this way. We've been having this conversation for years. I just don't know if it's meant to be. Sometimes in life, you know, you meet those people – who you feel like there's a connection to it just the timing never works out it's not meant to be i don't know if it's it's going to be meant to be for for zach levine and the new york knicks and it seems like the bulls are fine running it back seems so <laughs> that all indications are team run it back yeah which you know we just talked about uh they don't have lonzo so they actually can't fully run it back as to what made them successful and they don't really have many avenues to improve uh in free agency so um you know it'll be a, a perfectly uh, mediocre season out in Chicago where <laughs> Zach Levine will eventually, uh, you know, get his points, probably make a play in first round playoff run, something like that. And we could have this conversation again next year. There you go, man. Zach Levine will go into the names of Chris Paul, Rajon Rondo, all these names that, you know, we wanted on the Knicks or was linked to the Knicks in some way or some manner. That's the, that, that's where, that's the company he'll, he'll fall in CP and, and Corey. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens, man. You know, never say never. And some Knicks fans want to see it happen. Some Knicks fans want to see the Paul George situation. Uh, you know, Paul George gets sent to the Knicks. But it's just interesting, man, because as much as you don't want to believe, as much as you don't want to put on the tinfoil hat, like I said, you look at the Knicks, and if they went to Kentucky, they went to, and they rep <laughs> represented by CAA, there's a great chance they're coming to the Knicks. Hey, they got that with Toppin's brother. They got that. They got Jacob <laughs> yeah. Toppin. They're still leaving the light on for Spider Mitchell. We'll see what happens in Phoenix. Maybe it's Devin Booker. You know, it's Embiid. The, those are all, all the only guys that we really talk about seriously are the CAA connected players, man. So it, it's just, uh, it, it's very interesting, man. But we'll see what happens there. And great show, fellas, man. Another edition of the NBA Report. Corey, great job on all the draft coverage this year. Uh, you said you're going to Summer League, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All what right. What days are going to be there? Uh, 6th to the 11th. 6th to the 11th. Okay. I'll okay. see you there. Let's yeah. do it. Um, I'm still trying, yeah. to, trying to figure out um, schedule and arrangement. The, the Summer League schedule did drop. Yeah. So I'm going to see if I could drop in for like two days or so. If so, man, we'll, we'll definitely do the link up. We got the studio yes, in Vegas, man. You can come through, do some reactions to some hey, of the players that are we that blue wire, already We're Blue Wire 2 now. Well, that's it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> did, you, did you book studio time? Uh, I, we requested it. I don't know what the okay. answer is. So that's not my department. All right. All right. So, all right. We'll, we'll talk about it off air, man. But, um, yeah, great show. Great show, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll be back on Monday on the NBA Report, man. More trades, more trade rumors, more trade news. And Summer League right around the corner, man. So, keep it locked. Great show. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Subscribe and share this video. Have a great weekend, everybody. Peace.